Sutra. It is not Dana, no Shila, no Virya, no Shanti, no Dhyana, no Prana, no Paramita. Commentary. In the empty treasury of the first come one, the six perfections are also emptied. In the previous passage, the four truths were said to be empty. Immediately after his enlightenment, the Buddha explained the four truths and see three turnings and their three turnings. The empty being of the four truths and twelve links of conditioned causation makes the dhammas of the superiors and the conditioned enlightened ones empty. Now, the emptying of the six perfections makes the dhammas of the bodhisattvas empty. The first of the six perfections is dana, Sanskrit for giving. There are three kinds of giving. Giving of wealth, giving of dharma, and giving of fearlessness. In giving wealth, one gives material objects to people in order to help them out. Lecturing sutras and speaking dharma is an example of giving dharma. Giving of fearlessness occurs when someone is afraid of something and you think of a way to comfort him so that he isn't frightened anymore. The next is shila. Sanskrit for precepts. There are the five precepts, the eight precepts, the ten precepts, the two hundred and fifty precepts for bhikshus, and the three hundred and forty-eight precepts for bhikshunis. There are also the ten major and forty-eight minor bodhisattva precepts. Shanti is Sanskrit for patience. We say we study Buddha Dharma and it's not that difficult to learn the concepts. What is difficult is to put the concepts into practice. The way some people study patience is to tell others to be patient with them so that they will have no need to be patient with others. So they say to other people who are not patient with them, you have studied so much of the Buddha Dharma, you should have more patience. Why do you get so upset when I say just one thing to you? They blame others for not being patient but they can't be patient themselves. And how do they rationalize it? I understand the Buddha Dharma. I am supposed to be without a self, so I don't have any patience. I don't have the view that there's a self, so when it's time to be patient, it's you too who should be patient, not me. But when it's time to eat, they remember they are not supposed to have any view that they are people, so they think they don't have to give anyone else anything to eat. When there's work to be done, and when they are in a difficult spot, they remember that they are not supposed to have the view that there is a self, so they say they don't have to take care of such things. And if they kill someone, they say it doesn't matter, because there aren't any living beings to begin with. So I have, haven't really killed anything. Or they hit someone for no reason at all. And when asked why they did it, they say, there aren't any living beings and you belong in that category. So I haven't really hit anything at all. That's devil knowledge and devil views for you. When they eat meat, they say, it doesn't matter. Living beings aren't supposed to have the characteristic of a lifespan anyway. Since you don't have the characteristic of a lifespan, you can die at any time, so I can go ahead and eat you. Besides, once you're dead, your flesh will just get rancid if you don't eat it. That's what adherents of externalist religions say. They say that domestic animals are put here just for human beings to eat, and if they aren't eaten, they will overpopulate the world. If people didn't eat cows, sheep, and pigs, they would multiply until they feed up the world. But think about it, people don't eat cats, but the world has yet to be overridden with cats. In fact, when people don't eat animals, not so much killing karma is created, and the animals don't multiply so quickly. So some people misinterpret the principles such as the principle of patience 
and say that other people should be patient with them but that they themselves don't have to be patient with others. Virya is Sanskrit for Vigo. There is physical Vigo and mental Vigo. When your mind is vigorous, you are seeking Buddha Dharma at all times. When your body is vigorous, you practice the Buddha Dharma at all times. Dhyana is also a Sanskrit word. It means quiet consideration. There are many kinds of dhyana, but now the Buddha says that there isn't any dhyana either. Prana, another Sanskrit word, means wisdom. There are three kinds of prana. Literary prana, contemplative prana, and after appearance prana. Thus, the six perfections of all paramitas are all empty. Paramita, also Sanskrit, means to reach the other shore. It refers to the successful completion of anything. We cultivate and become Buddhas. Having progressed from the state of an ordinary being to the state of Buddha is a case of Paramita. For an ordinary person to become a Bodhisattva is another kind of Paramita. Going from San Francisco to Auckland is also a kind of Paramita. Now all these dharmas in the treasury of the first Kamana said to not exist. They are all emptied. Previously, when we said that empty space does not exclude any appearances, we were talking about the treasury of the first Kamana, which is not empty. Here, we are discussing the empty treasury of the first Kamana. In describing the empty treasury of the first Kamana, the word not is used, but it doesn't signify total negation. What still exists is the basically wonderful, perfect mind, but that mind is not called by these names. So here the empty treasury of the first common is being described. Sutra, nor any other, it is not the Tathagata, nor the Ahats, nor Shakyamuni Buddha, Sha, nor Samyak Sambuddhi, nor Paranibbana, no eternity, no bliss, no true self, no purity. Commentary Nor any other means that all the levels of enlightenment from the six paramitas through the ten dwellings, the ten faiths, the ten practices, the ten transferences, and the ten grounds, up to and including the fusion of Buddhahood, are included in the ending, progressing from the level of Bodhisattvahood so the fusion of Buddhahood takes a long time, and there are many dramas along the way, but none of them exist. They are all empty, and the fusion of Buddhahood is also empty. It is not the Tathagata which is Sanskrit for the first common. Even the title of the first common is empty, nor the Ahas, those worthy of the offerings of people and gods, nor is it Samyak Sambodhi, the title one of proper and universal knowledge is also empty. Proper knowledge is the mind being the mind at dharmas. Universal knowledge is the mind at dharmas being the mind. One of proper and universal knowledge realizes that the mind is the mind at dharmas. The mind at dharmas are the mind. Nor is it pari nirvana. The Sanskrit word nirvana is interpreted as meaning not produced and not extinguished. Even the concept of not production and not extinction is non-existent. Nor is it eternity, no place, no true self, no purity. Eternity means unmoving. Bliss means being filled with the joy of Dharma. True self is the comfort of having attained the journey self. Purity is what is obtained from the Dharma of Nirvana. These names are also non-existent. They are also empty. You may ask then, what there is in the treasury of the first common? I've told you before that everything is there. You ask what is not there. There isn't anything there at all. Everything is made from the mind alone. The treasury of the first common is empty, is not empty, and is both empty and not empty. And so the mystery in it is endless. You can say that things exist. You can say that they are empty and 
you can say that they do not exist and are not empty. After you have studied the Buddha Dharma for a long time, you will understand this. Sutra, therefore it is neither mundane nor transcendental, since the treasury of the first common is the fundamental brightness of the wonderful mind. Commentary, what has been discussed above is the empty treasury of the first common. Therefore, it follows from these principles that it is neither mundane nor transcendental. The treasury of the first common is empty. There aren't any dhammas. This is called strip away all dhammas and separate from all appearances. The total absence of any dhammas is true emptiness. True emptiness can bring about wonderful existence. Mundane refers to the six ordinary dharma realms. Transcendental refers to the four holy dharma realms. The treasury of the first common is the fundamental brightness of the wonderful mind. On the other hand, the mundane and transcendental dharmas are just the treasury of the first common, fundamentally bright and illumining. They are the wonderful mind which is still and constantly illumining illumining and constantly still. The text here says, the treasury of the first common is not, and the text that follows says that absolutely everything is the treasury of the first common, the fundamental brightness of the wonderful mind. Sutra, it is the mind, it is emptiness, it is earth, it is water, it is wind, it is fire, it is the eyes, it is the ears, the nose, the tongue, body, and the mind. It is form, it is sounds, smells, taste, objects of touch, and dramas. It is the realm of eye consciousness, and so forth up to and including the realm of mind consciousness. Commentary, it is the mind, the discriminating conscious mind. It is emptiness, it is earth, it is water, it is wind, it is fire, it is the eyes, it is the ears, the nose, the tongue, the body, and the mind. It is form, it is sounds, smells, tastes, objects of touch, and dharmas. It is the realm of eye consciousness, and so forth, up to and including the realm of mind consciousness. So the empty treasury of the first common is also the existent treasury of the first common. The treasury of the first common which is not empty. Thus, in the treasury of the first common, which is empty and yet not empty, there is the fundamental brightness of the wonderful mind. It is the five skandhas, the six entrances, the twelve places, and the eighteen realms. Sutra, it is understanding and ignorance and the ending of understanding and ignorance, and so forth up to and including old age and death and the ending of old age and death. It is suffering, it is accumulation, it is extinction, and it is the way. It is knowing and attaining, it is dana, it is shila, it is virya, it is shanti, it is dhyana, it is prana, and it is paramita, and so forth, up to and including the talavata, the ahas, samyak sambuddhi, paranibbana, Eternity, bliss, true self, and purity. Commentary This section of text describes the treasury of the first common, which, which is not empty. Previously, the empty treasury of the first common was described. Now it is said to be not empty. If it's empty, why is now said not to be empty? After it's empty, it cannot, can be not empty. If it were empty and if that's all there were to it, it wouldn't be wonderful. It's because true emptiness is what gives rise to wonderful existence and wonderful existence produces true emptiness. So now the treasury of the first common, which is not empty, is giving rise to wonderful existence. Therefore, the five skandhas, the six sentences, the twelve places, the eighteen realms, the four truths, and the twelve links of conditioned causation and so forth, none of them is empty. They can be empty or not empty because there are no fixed dramas. That's why the Vata Sutra says, even dramas should be relinquished, not to speak of no dramas. You should not be attached to the existence of dramas. 
because if you are you have an attachment to dramas if you have an attachment to dramas it is the same as if you have not understood the drama originally you have an attachment to self but then when you encounter the dharma you give rise to attachment to dharmas in buddhism then you can't have any attachments if there are no attachments existence is just non-existence if you have attachments then non-existence exists sutra it is both mundane and transcendental since the treasury of the first common is the wonderful brightness of the fundamental mind commentary in the previous passage it is said that it is the five skandhas the six entrances the twelve places the eighteen realms the four truths the twelve links of conditioned causation the six paramitas and so forth including the titles of the first come one it is all these things further it is both mundane and transcendental since the treasury of the first common is the wonderful brightness of the fundamental mind, the basic mind that is still and always illumining, Sutra. It is apart from is and is not. It is identical with is and is not. Commentary. It is apart from is, from existence, and is not non-existence. It is not that it does exist. And it is not that it doesn't exist. That's true emptiness and wonderful existence. So the principle of the treasury of the third come one, which is empty and yet not empty, is that these are part of from emptiness and existence and yet not a part from emptiness and existence. And in light of this principle, the Buddha spoke what follows. Sutra, how can living beings in the three realms of existence on the level of worldliness and the sound hearers and those enlightened to conditions on the level of transcendence make a supposition suppositions about the supreme body of the first come one with the minds that they know of or enter the knowledge of vision of the Buddha through the medium of worldly language and expressions? Commentary. How can living beings in the three realms of existence on the level of worldliness in the desire realm, the form realm, and the formless realm, in the six common dharma realms, the self hearers, and those enlightened to conditions on the level of transcendence, the hearts of the two vehicles, how can they make suppositions about the supreme body of the first come one with the minds that they know of? At that time, Purna had already been certified as having attained the fourth version of Ahashi. So the Buddha says, the minds you know of, the mind of an ordinary person and the mind of an Ahad. How can you investigate the Buddha's enlightenment which no one surpasses? Or enter the knowledge and vision of the Buddha through the medium of worldly language and expressions? You want to know the Buddha's knowledge and vision. You want to get into the same state as the Buddha. But how can that be? Worldly language is the knowledge and vision of ordinary people. And even you who have transcended the mundane and are at the fourth stage of Ahashi still cannot imagine the state of Buddha, of the Buddha. You can't use language and consideration to make suppositions about it to guess at it make a suppositions means you don't really know but you assume something about it for example a child likes to eat candy so we suppose that everyone likes to eat candy it doesn't know that some grown-ups don't like candy by the same token ordinary people and even ahas who are still in the state of the small vehicle don't have total comprehension so and so they don't know the state of the Buddha.